Hello. So drone-based building inspections have come a long way. We are no longer in the world where we're just capturing random images and sending them to our client or stakeholder. We're actually creating 3D models and sometimes even 4D models of these buildings and understanding what is their true condition when captured with a drone. But how do you actually capture a tall building that is in a congested area and create these amazing 3D inspection reports? We'll have a look in this video. Hey everyone, I'm Varun from Hammer Missions, and in this particular video, I'm gonna go through the step-by-step -step process on how you can capture really tall buildings and produce really great results using drones because not every building is the same and you've got to make sure you've got the right workflows and the right tools in place to be able to achieve a great inspection. Let's jump right in. So the first thing to do when you're looking to capture a really tall building or a super tall building is to understand what is the deliverable that your client or stakeholder is, is expecting. So is it that they really want to just understand the condition of the roof? Is it the facade? Is it many facades? or is it all of the building together? And to be able to isolate that, you really need to understand what is it that you're looking for? Are you looking for cracks on the roof? Are you looking for concrete cracks on the facade? Are you looking for spalling issues? Or are you looking for other things like vegetation growth and many other things that affect the buildings in our world? So understanding what the client or the stakeholder is really looking for, and then tying that back to whether you need to capture the roof or the facade, or all facades is really important. So start with the deliverable, understand that deliverable, and then really work your way backwards to understand what might be the best way to capture a tall building. Now, once you've identified your end deliverable, there are many different options and many different paths that you can take. So option number one is to capture simply the roof. If the issue is on the roof, well, all you have to do is take off your drone and capture just the roof. Now. Because you're capturing a really tall building, it's really, really important that you take the ground offset into account. And if you haven't come across ground offset before, that's simply the height of the building. And the reason why that's important is because when you're capturing the roof of a building, especially a really tall building, you wanna make sure that your overlap calculations are done with respect to the roof, as, is, as opposed to with respect to the ground. And the overlap calculations are done typically with respect to the ground, and therefore you want to offset that by the height of the roof or height of the building and essentially get your right overlaps. So if you're capturing just the roof, that's really important to bear in mind. The other thing to really bear in mind is that you might have a polygon that you're using to capture the roof that is not quite aligned with the roof. And if it's a really tall building, you may not actually have the freedom to fly the drone to the top and check all of the boundaries or the polygon. So giving yourself a healthy margin outside of the roof uh, what it looks like on the map is really important as well if you're capturing just the roof. So that's option number one. Option number two is to capture just the facade or just a number of facades. Now, obviously this option applies only if you're looking for issues on the facade. And what you can do over here is to actually fly a vertical flight plan that is right in front of the facade that you want to capture, maintaining a healthy distance, something like five to 10 meters from the facade so that you're able to pick out issues cracks, concrete crack cracks, spalling, so on and so forth. And so you can actually do this process for multiple facades, depending on what kind of clearance you have in the building, whether you can actually navigate from one facade to the other seamlessly. But it's really important to make sure that you've got good GPS signal and you've got good connectivity with the remote controller. And as is the case with most drone operations, safety always comes first. So best to ensure that you do one facade at a time if you think that's the safest way to do it, if you've got a bit more clearance, you can go ahead and do multiple facades at the same time. But option number two is to capture just the facades. And so if the roof doesn't really have any issues that you're looking for, go for just the facades and do that. Option number three is to capture both the roof and the facades. Now, this is when things get a bit more interesting because you've got to get both the roof and the facades in one picture. And in option number one and option number two, what you could do is you could actually process the roof separately or the facade separately and then see all of the images, the inspection images on top of the roof or the facade. And if you think about it, one of them is going to be aligned in the horizontal plane 
and the other one is going to be aligned in the vertical plane. However, what do you do when you want to actually capture both the roof and facade of a really tall building? Because it can get a bit tricky. Because obviously, if you don't have overlap between the roof and the facade images, it can get pretty difficult to create a 3D model of the building and to also then deliver your inspection images alongside uh, those roof and facade images. So one solution that we recommend in that particular scenario is to actually fly the roof of the building as you normally would, and then also to fly an orbit or a lateral capture, uh, basically capturing the boundary of the polygon, looking straight down with an oblique angle with, uh, with respect to the building. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to actually take the roof images and take the oblique images taken in an orbit at the same altitude as the roof and create a 3D model from those images. And this 3D model, because the images are going to have high overlap, is actually going to be really detailed. And what you can then do is you can actually add your facade images to the same data set and create your overall picture for your building, super tall building. So once again, what you would do is you would capture your roof images and then you would capture an orbit or lateral capture around the tall building and you would have an oblique angle so that you're looking through that oblique angle, not just at the roof, but also at the facade and you're creating a 3D model using those images off the tall or super tall building. And then you can also add your facade images, but they're not processed in this data set they're simply added to the same data sets so that you can see all of the facade images with respect to the 3D model. So that's option number three, where you can combine the roof images, the oblique orbit images, and then the facade images to build a complete comprehensive picture of the entire building and allow a structural engineer or an architect or anyone who's specialized at looking at buildings to actually survey that building and understand what are the different issues with it uh, in a safe, and a comprehensive manner. Now, what you don't want to do is you don't want to go about this in a very random fashion. So you don't want to like take some roof images, some facade images, and then try to merge them all together because you, that could quickly turn into a nightmare. And at the end of the day, it's a super tall building. So it's really important to make sure that the end customer or stakeholder is able to actually piece together where those images are. And if they don't, if they're not able to do that, then you're going to be in trouble. So it's important that you've got all of the data, all the right things put together in one comprehensive project. Now, one of the other things you will find if you're capturing tall buildings is that unfortunately, buildings do block GPS signal. So you've got to be prepared to take control of your drone at any point in time in case you're doing this automated. And if you're doing it manually, even then you've got to make sure that losing GPS would mean that you're flying in a slightly different environment, in a slightly different condition. And so you might have to actually be much more active on the sticks than what you would normally expect. One way to prevent this is if you're capturing the roof, you can actually take off your drone to the height of the building or potentially even higher than the roof of the building and acquire more GPS signal before you start your automated mission. So acquiring more GPS satellites, typically for DJI drones, we sort of see having 15 satellites or more can be quite good, uh, which is not an issue if you're actually above the roof. And then starting your automated mission can actually give you a better chance of success when it comes to having GPS um, throughout your mission. An important thing to also note is that you should always make sure that your go home height and your emergency sequence for the drone is actually always in place. Now, this applies to almost every drone mission you do, but it's even more important when you've got a large building that you're surveying and it's right in the middle of the landing point and your actual um, go home height. So you've got to make sure that the go home sequence is very much thought through and you've got multiple landing points designated in case an emergency occurs. In terms of the distance to the facade or distance to the roof, one interesting thing that actually works in your favor is that unlike capturing a piece of ground which is quite far away from the drone, because the building is so close to the drone, both in the roof and the facade, your GSD or your ground sampling distance, which by the way, I've made a whole video on if you don't know what that is, would actually be really, really high. And a high GSD means essentially a low GSD numerically, which means that you're actually very, very close to the building or your target subject. And therefore you're going to capture a lot of detail. So 
there's not all bad news or challenges. There are some things that are actually working for you when you're capturing a tall building uh, or any building for that matter, if you're close to the subject. Now, five to 10 meters um, and more leading towards 10 meters is what you should be aiming for. If you're going to get really close to the facade, you've again got to be very careful because DJI drones and even other drones do have obstacle avoidance sensors and these will tend to kick in if you're really close to the to the subject and they might interfere with the flight they might prevent you from flying um, automated or even manual if they're too close so just make sure that you're maintaining a healthy distance from the facade and keeping that keeping that distance uh, the whole time you're capturing capturing your data now what you can also do if you're capturing a building and you're going through this complex flight operation is that you could actually get more bang for your buck if you're actually capturing not just visual but also thermal and when it comes to thermal surveys obviously they're only useful for certain things so if you are actually looking for moisture related issues or water ingress related issues or insulation related issues that makes sense to actually use a thermal camera but if you can actually planning your thermal flight alongside your visual flight or your rgb flight will give you a good return on investment with respect to the time so you don't have to actually do a thermal survey separately. You can actually do it alongside your RGB or your visual mission. But if you're capturing thermal data, one thing to make sure uh, with some of the modern drones like the Mavic 3 Enterprise Thermal, you want to make sure that you plan your flight with the RGB camera and not the thermal camera. Because the RGB camera, if you've got a good GSD, something like one centimeter per pixel, will automatically ensure that you're getting a good GSD on your thermal camera is not going to be as low by low I mean high quality GSD as the visual camera but it's still going to be good enough for you to be able to actually process that data set or review that data set in the post alongside your key stakeholder or customer and last but not the least that I would say on this topic is that do not forget your inspection images so I think there is an art to capturing tall buildings you want to capture one data set that allows you to give basically gives you your 3d model and you want to capture another data set that actually has the inspection so all of the nice wonderful images that are at a close distance to your particular subject uh, and capturing about all that detail obviously the other thing you could do is you could actually use a high megapixel camera with a really high focal length to be able to capture from a distance but typically what we see with these cameras is that they require a larger drone to to actually fly and that can be a no-no when it comes to a built-up environment with tall buildings. So again, inspection Im images are really important, keeping them nice and sharp and clear and close to the building and adding that as a supplement to your 3D model, or in fact, your 3D model being a supplement to your inspection images is a good workflow to build. And just make sure you keep all of these different points in mind when capturing a tall building. And as I said before, safety always comes first, so prioritize for that. Hopefully this video was interesting. Uh, if it was, do give us a like. If you've got suggestions for what videos we should cover in our upcoming videos, do leave them in the comment section below. We're always interested in seeing what you think. Thanks so much for supporting us so far. And if you do like this channel and would like to support us, do give us a subscribe. We'd love to see you in the next video for Knowledge Hub.